Hello! Uh, this is a Dell. It was a very expensive Dell. It's uh, an Inspiron 17, a 7737, as it says there, from their 7000 series. It has got a 17 inch touchscreen, very nice touchscreen. Um, it's got an i7 in it. It's the um, dual core quad thread one and it's got 16 gig of RAM and a G4750M. So by modern standards, by, you know, when you're watching this, it's not the most powerful machine that you can buy. But nonetheless, it is and was an expensive laptop when it was purchased. And it seems a shame that it gets binned <laughs> because Windows 11 doesn't like it. I have a separate video where I install Windows 11 on this machine and it works perfectly. There are other issues that you might come across if you've got one of these. So just watch this and we'll find out a little bit more about some of the things that you might, you know, encounter. First thing is, um, let's look at tools. So um, I've got a, a Leatherman Free P4, but you can use a, a pair of pliers or a pair of tweezers, as we'll see, or even your own fingers, depending on how strong they are. Um, that's a PH1 screwdriver, just a cro cross blade sort of screwdriver, and a spudger. Now, the, the Leatherman isn't essential. You can, you can do it with your, your fingers, but these two are essential. The spudger is essential and the PH1 is essential. You need that. If you're going to be taking laptops apart anyway, you need a spudger. Simple as that. Um, right, so now we know what the tools are. Let's see uh, what we do next. Now, my next thing is to bring in uh, probably the most important bit. It's not specially calibrated. It's uh, a monkey old tea towel. <laughs> uh, the first one I grabbed out the drawer. Uh, and that's because when you flip it up to look at the bottom of the laptop, because we're going to spend most of our time looking at its bottom, you put the tea towel underneath it so that as you're moving it around, you don't scratch the lid to pieces. It's a small point, but I wanted to emphasize it. Okay, so let's actually get this thing apart and um, I'll point out some issues. This also covers how you can upgrade it if you want to. There are a few upgrades that I would deem essential. Well, one main one that's essential, but we'll come to that in a minute. So we'll take the screws out now. So there's a conspicuous panel here, which we'll start with. So there's a screw there and this one comes out. So you take it out. And I've got a magnetic mat, which you can probably just see in the corner there, so that I don't lose the screws. And so when the screws go back in, they came out, you know, they go back in the same old they came out of. Um, just makes life easier. If you've ever done lots of laptops, um, you'll have one of those, because all you've got to do is lose the screw a few times, and it becomes very annoying. So I've had that mat for a long time. Um, right, I've undone that screw, but it doesn't come out because it's captive, so don't try and remove it. But I'm going to just grab it with the Leatherman, like that, and I'm just going to pull it. And that pop was the fittings coming out, and now I can just wriggle it, and it just comes off. Uh, what I've noticed about Dell over the years is that if you try and do things the way the Dell engineers designed it, you just sort of blow on things and they fall apart, and they come apart so easily. If you deviate from what Dell had in mind, you can have an absolute nightmare and you can break stuff. So just bear that in mind. Also, Dell are quite nice because they do provide comprehensive guides for their technicians mainly to download so that when they are dismantling things, there's actually a manual on how to do it. But you know, hopefully you're watching this instead of reading that. Um, right, let's get the battery out. There's two screws for that. One there, which I'm going to put on the mat, and another one there. Now this is the original battery, so it doesn't work anymore. And the main way that manifests itself is that if you power it up with Windows 11, it immediately shuts itself down because it thinks the battery is about to fail and it sort of hibernates immediately. Um, but if you take the battery out completely, the laptop works absolutely perfectly. And when on the other video where I install Windows 11 on this, that's because the battery is taken out. <laughs> so you might find your battery is completely knackered as it was in this one. And in that case, if you just take it out, you can carry on using the laptop. You can buy that as a replacement battery. They do still exist. Whether they're completely authentic Dells is hard to determine because this is an old laptop, but you can still get that battery. It's about 50 quid. Um, I would 
uh, it depends how you want to use it. If you want the portability, buy a new battery. If you just want to be able to use it, take the battery out and it will carry on working. Uh, next thing, now you've got the battery out, is to take the hard drive out. And there's three screws for that. One, two and three. So I'm just going to unscrew those and put those on the mat, roughly in the position that I take them out. You don't know whether you're going to get different size screws when you start taking a laptop apart. So it's always good to sort of just line things up so that you've got a really good idea of which hole it came out of, so you put it back in the same hole. So that's the hard drive released. I'm now going to just lift the hard drive up, and what you notice is that it's on a little cable. So I'm just going to put a nail underneath that little flap and grab the connector and just pull it off. And that takes the connector off. This is an, a sort of SSHD, so it's got a solid state component, I think. It's a one terabyte one. Um, I would say the essential upgrade for this particular laptop is to replace that with an actual solid state drive. Because that's going to make a whole world of difference. It's going to be absolutely incredible with that, yeah, with that replaced. But that is the original drive that came with it. Uh, and you notice there's a loose cable there that's flapping around. Don't try and remove that cable because it's attached inside and we can't take it off without removing the back cover. Which we'll do now. So we need to get other screws undone. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is pop off this rather conspicuous other cover. If I just get my thumb underneath that bit there and put, lift it up, it just lifts straight out. It's got two lugs there. That's quite important. And while I'm at it, I want to point out that on the bottom panel you just removed, there's three lugs. We'll talk about that when we put it back together. So there's the RAM. There's no need to take the RAM out because there's no screws in there. But there is one little screw there which I'm going to take out. And that secures the CD-ROM drive, DVD drive. Remember those? <laughs> so I'm going to just put that on the mat. And then I'm going to put the screwdriver in the little notch and then just push it with my finger and the drive comes out. Because you can see there is a little notch there. So you put the screwdriver in that and then just push it and it comes straight out. Uh, next thing is there are one, two, three along the bottom. So I'm taking those out now. So we'll just remove those. That's one of them. Now you might be thinking maybe it would be faster if you use an electric screwdriver. And it probably would. I don't mind using electric screwdrivers for taking screws out. Um, sometimes they can be in quite quite powerfully so if you've got a cheap electric screwdriver it can sort of destroy the mechanism and the gearing inside but i wouldn't use an electric screwdriver to put screws back in because of the torque because you run the risk of damaging the plastic i will discuss that in a minute but there's another screw there it's next to the hard drive but it's not it doesn't actually secure the hard drive in but it's next to it there's one there so i'm going to take that one out like that and then we're looking around for other ones. There's none in here. There's none there. There's these three at the back. So we'll have those. And these are quite long. Because they also help secure the hinge. Uh, this one gets the back stuck down. And you might be thinking, does he need a magnetic screwdriver to get that out? If you've got nails, you can do it with nails. But you can use the magnetic screwdriver just to lift the screws out if they don't stick to your screwdriver. And this is that one there. Now, what about this rubber strip here? Now, the good thing about Dell is that um, they don't tend to put screws under rubber strips unless they have to, to keep the, the back of the laptop nice and clean so the smaller ones might have screws behind the little rubber feet but the larger ones tend not to because once you take the rubber off if it hasn't got a screw under then it wasn't designed to come off and so when you try and stick it back on again it doesn't fit very well it doesn't stick it might be stretched whereas the ones that have got screws under are almost sort of designed to be peeled off so they tend to fit on better when they come off so you have to be so you have to know whether there's a screw there if there's a screw there you've got to take it off anyway but if there isn't a screw there and you still take it off you run the risk of damaging it so just bear that in mind in our case there are no screws underneath that big rubber strip there so we just leave it alone 
Now we go looking for other screws and you'll notice there is a screw there. I've left that one till last on purpose. So I'm unscrewing that one. And I'm putting that there. And that is all the screws that I can see on the back. So is it safe to try and pry off the back cover? No, it isn't. <laughs> because the back cover is still screwed on because of the keyboard. So I'm just going to open this up and we'll have a look at the keyboard. Now, what you've got to watch it here because now the battery has been removed, the balance is all off. So you put the screen too far, it'll tip over. And this is where the spudger comes in first i'm going to use the spudger to remove the keyboard so there are some little indentations in the keyboard there and i'm going to put the spudger in that indentation and just wriggle it and what should happen is the keyboard should just sort of pop up so i'm trying to release the catch i'm not going to force it and i'm not going to use a knife because if you use a knife you will damage it Whereas if you use a spudger, because it hasn't got an edge, you can wriggle about with some degree of force and not break anything. This one's being a bit problematic, so I'm just going to give it a bit more welly. There it goes. And there's one here as well. I'm just going to wriggle that. And that's got the keyboard catches released at the back. I'm now going to take the keyboard and flip it over. And you can see underneath there's two cables. This large one here is the main keyboard cable. So I'm just going to lift that little flap and it comes off. The one there next to it, that orange one, that's because the keyboard's backlit. That's how you know it's an expensive laptop. So I'm just going to lift the catch on that and that comes straight off. And then I'm going to put that out of the way. There. What I'm looking for now are screws. And there is one there and one there. So these two screws have to come out because they secure the bottom to the top, if that makes sense, just to give a bit of extra stability. So that's that. I'm going to separate those screws away. I'm not going to put those screws on top of the keyboard because there's a very good chance that you pick up the keyboard and forget that you put the screws on and then the screws go flying. So I'm just going to put them next to it to remind me what they're for, but I'm not going to put them on it. T-towel is still being used because you can see I'm adjusting it. And I don't want to scratch it. Right now, next thing. That's all the screws out. So this cover can now be removed, but we have to get in it to actually release the compression fitting. So I'm going to start with this top corner here and I'm just going to shove in the spudger and then just give it a little bit of a twiddle and you can see it pop there. And I'm going to run the spudger along here and just wriggle it. And what happens is that pops, that pops the, the compression fittings. Now we're down the bottom here and there's a couple of ones down here that I need to get at. So I'm putting the, can you see that? It's not on camera, is it? I'll just move it. I'm just trying to find my way in here and find out where the fitting is and just try and wiggle it and pop it. There's no particular rush. It's better to be slow and steady rather than rush it because if you rush it, you, 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 you know, there's a good chance you're going to break something. And they are little, they are plastic, but they do come off with the right sort of persuasion. So I'm just running it along that edge, giving it a wriggle just to try and pop it out. not easy to do you just have to be careful and steady and in the cd bay there are actually three clips in there as well so i'm just going to try and tease those out without causing it too much stress and the whole back cover should then lift off like that and that's it off so you can see there's one there one there one there 
and one there and those are the ones that you just have to sort of push in a little bit so that's the whole back cover off so we can move that out of the way now i'll just pop it over here and with the back cover off we now get a closer look at what's going on inside uh, there's the ram again you don't need to remove that unless you want to upgrade it but you can upgrade it without taking the back cover off there's that cable I mentioned for the hard drive, so there's no way you're getting that out without removing the back cover, obviously. Now, what I'm particularly interested in is the CMOS battery there, because this particular model has got a standard CMOS battery, so it's the um, 2032 CMOS battery. And I'm going to just press it in and then flick it up, and it should just come out like that do it slowly because you don't want to slip and stab the circuit board so there's the CMOS battery and I'm gonna get me a little battery tester here I've got two battery testers I'll show you them one is utterly useless and one is actually rather good so I've got to get the right so this is the one that was in it and you can see it's absolutely there's nothing you know it's gone so I'm gonna put a new one in here's the new one so we'll just flick that over like that you can see that's that's off the scale good so this test is an analog tester i'm not sponsored all the things you see i'm using i'm not sponsored by anyone they're just the ones i use i did buy that one but i also bought this one which is like a, a little electronic one it seems now in hindsight it seems like a stupid thing to do because i bought a battery tester that has a battery in it which just seems counterintuitive so if i push that on there you can see they light up, but that's got a dodgy LED there. So that, don't buy that one. <laughs> it's by the same company, so I'm allowed to criticise it. Um, buy this one instead, because this one actually is analogue. And it's, it obviously it's got no batteries, so get that one. So now I'm going to put that battery in. You just drop it in and press it, and that's it in. Now while the back's off, I'm going to go around and I'm just going to tighten up the hinge screws if they're loose because when the laptop gets opened and closed you get sort of fatigue and that can loosen those screws they're nice and tight and any other screws you can see if they're tight or not these ones here you can just tighten those are not too much just just you get a feel for how tight it needs to be if it if there's too much give when you first start twisting it then you know it needs to be tightened okay so that's the battery um, replaced. Now the thing is, uh, if you run it off the mains, because you've removed the old battery, and the mains power goes, this particular laptop will complain and moan that the date's set wrong. And that's because of that battery. So for this particular model of laptop, if you've got one like this, changing that battery is a really good idea. So you can change that battery for about three pounds, and not bother replacing the main battery because that's about 50 quid and then just keep using this until you know well until it actually breaks <laughs> right so we've done that we swap the battery over now what we do is put the lid back on and to do that we need the lid here it is so i'm going to just remember to poke the hard drive connector through the hole <laughs> That's quite important and then I'm just gonna position it like that and remember because they're compression fittings making sure that cable isn't tangled because they're compression fittings I just press it and everything fits back together again like that and you can feel them popping and you can see that they're, they're all going into the right place and you check along that edge there because there's three in there and then just give it a little push and what you find is that everything fits in and now everything's fitted in <laughs> we can start putting screws in remember to put the screws in the same hole they came out of just to make life easier so that one goes in there like that and then we've got these three at the front which i think aren't quite in camera so i'll just move it so there's these three at the front like that In they go, one, two, three. And 
and we've got another one here now it's tempting to um, put the battery in and then screw it in that screw hole there is where the screw you took out came from not that one that one is actually used by the lid so remember to put it in the right hole so that one goes in there I'm leaving the battery out because the battery is knackered but I'm going to put the hard drive back in like this so the hard drive just pushes in and then sits in the little bay and then we put the three screws in that secure it so there's one two three so remember using an electric screwdriver I think is okay for undoing screws but I wouldn't use one to do them up because I'm just a bit worried that I'll lose concentration and destroy something because these screws because the outer shell is plastic these screws sit in a little brass fitting that's got teeth on it um, they push that into the shell into a little sort of cylinder and it grabs and grips it and if you over tighten screws you can cause that to, to shatter the plastic around it so you've got to be a little bit careful how you do things I think anyway so we've got some more screws to put in now so I've done that one that one that one that one that one that one and that one so let's start with the ones at the back here Now you've also got a couple of screws that were used for the battery so I'm just going to put those into the holes they came out of because I'm not putting the battery in because the battery is broken. That way we don't lose the screws. So I'm putting the screws back into the holes they came out of. So those two there. And I've got another screw to put in for the CD drive which just slots in and that's that screw there. So that one goes in there like that and that's the CD drive in. Now I'm in a position to um, put this back on, this back plate, two lugs there. The lugs go in first and then it drops down. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my thumb in the middle and just flex the outer bit just so they clip in better. And you can tell it's in because it's got a bit of a wriggle to it so it's not jammed. Right that's in there. Now there is this screw here which is rather conspicuous but I'm going to come to that because what I'm going to do now is put the back cover on. Remember those three lugs? One, two, three. They go in first. So you put those in first and then just drop the, the cover down and it just clips on. That screw remember is captive so I'm just going to do that screw up now. Like that. There's a screw there the non-captive one, the first one I took out, that one goes back in, like that. And now we flip it over because we're going to do the keyboard. Lift it up like this, open it up. Now there were two screws that we took out before the keyboard goes back in. So there's one there and one where the, the screwdriver is then just then. So I'm going to just screw that one in. That's that. Now let's get the keyboard itself. Now I'll show you a little tip with this. Now if you notice how it's hanging like that, the, the orange one goes underneath the, um, the black one. So you can either have it like that, or you can have it like that. Now judging by the state of this, there's actually a little bit of a dip there, a little bit of a tray there, so it wants to go in like that. So what you do is you do the re reverse order of what you did to take it off, which was first thing was to replace the backlight cable, which is a bit fiddly, but once it's in the right place, it snaps down. And then you replace the main keyboard connector and again that fits in 
and then you push that down and then you gently move it so that when it goes back in I'll just lift it up to see if we can see that on camera when it goes back in the orange I don't know I don't think you can see it but I'm not the camera then I don't think you can see it but you want it so that the orange when you look at it like that the orange is against the case so it's not sandwiched between the main ribbon and the keyboard and then you drop it down and push those in and they those latches click and then finally you turn it over because we've got that one last screw to put in which goes in there and then we remove the tea towel flip it back over and that's kind of where we're at now and we will now give it some mains because the battery's out remember and then see what happens when we turn it on so the first time you try and turn it on after the um, everything's been done it will moan about the clock being incorrect press f2 and you get in the bios and then you can set the system time it uses a 24-hour clock so i've set it 11:49. system date uh, americans uh, do a couple of things quite well one of which is their date format because it's quite handy for computers if you arrange things in date order um then the american sort of way of doing it is brilliant because it does month day year rather than day month year which is the sort of conventional uk way of doing things so if you create a folder which is day month year everything gets mixed up <laughs> but if you do month first then the months kind of get listed together so it's quite um yeah that's why they do it so um this is 17th of the 7th so it's 07 17 2024 once you've set that you can then save and exit and it will then um, continue to boot And after a little bit of um and ah in, we, um, we're working in viewer. So this, as, as I say, this, has got, this is the old Dell, Windows 8. Officially, Windows 11 doesn't support it because the process is too old. Um, but it does run Windows 11 perfectly happily. Again, the ears, there's an issue with the battery. You take the battery out, run it off the mains, it's fine. There's an issue with it forgetting the date and time all the time. You do what I did in this video, and that's put a new CMOS battery in, and away you go. And you've got a perfectly good computer that's good for another few years. Um, hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, liking and subscribing is appreciated. If you do have any questions or you want me to go over a bit in the video because it wasn't clear to you, then just add a comment and I'll answer it. I answer all the comments pretty much. And, um, and I hope you found it useful. And um, as ever, thanks for watching.